one second. Okay. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Mike. I'm with Radical Reptile Fun. Um, and everybody, uh, thanks for tuning in today. It is 6 o'clock. Uh, we promised you a video at 6 o'clock, so we are here. We are live from Red Mountain Conservation Center. Now, this is a private um, zoo, basically. It's a private uh, zoological uh, place. Um, you cannot come to the pub. You, it, you can't come out to it or anything like that. But they do have a zoo license. Uh, they are a conservation center that allows for breeding of exotic animals, and we're going to meet a lot of exotic animals today. Uh, these exotic animals are bred for zoos and everything like that. Um, so yeah, we're going to meet some really insane animals. It's going to be super exciting. If you actually look behind me, there's actually a few different animals that you can already see. There's a capybara. There's a, another sm um, smaller mammal called a paca, and then you also have the kookaburras, which are a type of bird. Um, everybody knows the kookaburra sound. We're actually going to meet a kookaburra up close today, too. But let me introduce who's right next to me right here. This is Savannah, not the bird. <laughs> <laughs> so this this is Savannah. Now, Savannah, what, what first, how are you? I'm doing well. Uh, it's nice outside, which is beautiful. Um, so yeah, my name is Savannah Bowers, and I own Animal Fantastique LLC. Um, we also bring, you know, some exotic animals, reptiles, birds to birthday parties, schools, and we also do film and media as well. So you know, if you're looking for an animal for a movie, television, commercial, YouTube channel, etc., definitely reach out to us. We're happy to help you guys out. Nice. Now, Savannah, who do you have here? I'm sure everybody's wondering who is, who's on your hand. Sure, this is Fiona, and she's a Eurasian eagle owl. She's about two years old, um, and so she's about as full grown as she's going to get. She might fill out a little bit more, but she won't get too much bigger. Awesome. And how much can an owl turn its head? So they can't turn their head all the way around like many people believe. It's not a full 360, but they can do pretty close. As you can see, she can look pretty much directly behind her to the side, but it's not like a full spin. That spine is still connected in the neck. They can't, you know, dislocate it and turn, but they can see pretty much, you know, behind them one way, and then if they turn their head the other way, they can see behind themselves again. And you're wearing this glove. Mm -hmm. uh, how about you show them why we're wearing this glove today? Yeah, so <laughs> her talons are pretty sharp. Um, you don't really want to mess with them without this glove. It would be very painful for me to hold her. Um, so definitely I need a protective glove when handling her just to protect myself from these talons. In the wild, they hunt, you know, small mammals mostly. And so they'll reach down and they'll grab with those sharp talons, grab onto their prey and be able to carry it up, up into the air, into wherever they're going to go eat in their nest, etc. And what does, her name's Fiona, what yeah. does Fiona typically like to eat? Her favorite food is rats, um, so she gets usually, you know, a large rat once to twice a day. Um, usually she eats a little more in the summer and then slows down a bit in the winter, but um, yeah, she loves her rats for sure. Awesome. And um, so you you have your own business. Uh -huh. Now you are um, at this Red Mountain Conservation Center right now, sure. right? Sure, yes. Um, who is the owner of the Red Mountain Conservation Center? Sure, so that would be James Badman. He owns this conservation center, um, and then he also lets us come out and use some of his animals and work with them, train with them, which is you know wonderful and I'm so grateful for it. Awesome. And so James is a, is a good friend of mine as well. Um, I've, wor I've worked with him before. Um, I've known him since I was like 16 running around Wildlife World Zoo for a little while. Um, and uh, let me just say, James also owns a pet shop. The pet shop is called Wildside Pets. Now, tell everybody, what when things kind of slow down, because right now with everything going on with uh, the virus and everything, things get to slow down, what can they see at Wildside Pets? Yeah, sure. So one of the animals you might be able to see if you come in on Saturdays, Fiona is usually here. Not at the moment, just with how hectic everything is. Um, we're not trying to bring large crowds in. But on most Saturdays, um, unless it's too hot, if it's really hot outside, we don't bring her in. But she'll be right up at the front of the store. She sits in a cage on a, you know, she has a nice perch there and she'll hang out and that helps her get used to being around people getting photographs taken of her kids running around and it's really great for her the rest of the week she's here at the conservation center she has you know a nice size enclosure that she can fly around in you know do owl things um, but on Saturdays she is at the pet store there's also a number of other really neat animals you can check out there as well awesome and where is the pet shop located at sure it's off of Higley and Brown Road in Mesa Arizona awesome and we're going to meet a lot of animals and we're and even though we're 
meeting birds. Uh, we're going to be meeting mammals. We're also going to be meeting reptiles, too, because radical reptile fun, right? So we have to plug some reptiles in here as well. Um, so, yeah. Uh, anything else you want to tell us about Fiona? Anything that you find fascinating? Any you, You've been really training her and stuff. Sure. Does she have any cool um, behaviors that she likes to do? Anything that's funny? Anything like that? Yeah, sometimes when she's not stressed out. Right now she's a little stressed out, she won't, so she won't do it. Um, but she'll hoo back at you. So if you make you know the hooting sound of an owl, sometimes she'll respond to you, which is really fun. Um, if she's you know nice and comfortable hanging out in her enclosure. Also, um, sometimes when you, they are nocturnal, and so sometimes when I first go to get her in the, the morning or during the day, she's a little grumpy, so she makes a hissing noise or will cluck a little bit, but then as soon as she, you know, realizes that she's waking up, she's not going to go back to bed, she's really good, and she'll get on the glove. It just takes her a couple minutes to figure out what's going on, but she's a great bird, been doing really well with the training. Um, I've been working with her for about four or five months now, and she's been a rock star. She's, you know, such a good bird. Awesome. Well, everyone says you're beautiful, Fiona, so that's great. <laughs> Everybody, let's get some lovely hearts all over Yeah, the let's well, get going. Uh, all hearts for Fiona. Um, you thank you for showing us, Fiona. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get a mammal now um, sure. while you take Fiona back, and I uh, know you're going to bring us uh, another awesome animal, so I yeah. can't wait to see. So uh, we're going to meet something that's been making lots of noise in the background, <laughs> yeah. so... Uh, yeah, thank you so okay, much. Thank you. We'll, be, we'll see you here in just yeah, a moment here. And um, while we're waiting, um, Walter. Walter? Yes, Walter, a beautiful Chinese water yes. dragon. April and her son would like to know how he's doing right now. Walter is doing amazing. He's nice and fat. He is good at eating out of our hands. And yes, he still hates Tegan. Stop that. <laughs> Um, he really likes me. He really likes our neighbors. For some reason, he doesn't like Tegan. We don't know why, but uh, he just doesn't like Tegan. But he's doing amazing. Uh, he's done so many birthday parties now. So, uh, again, he's, he's an amazing lizard. Everybody thinks he's an iguana, and we have to educate the show that, no, he's a Chinese water dragon. So, so he's doing um, awesome. Perfect. All right. Well, here. Well, oh, oh, dear. So. <laughs> well, okay. Hi. All right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm holding. So James, what is this? This Jacob's is four horn sheep. Jacob's a four horn sheep. As you can no. see, it has four horns. Oh, it's a Jacobson's four horn. Sheep. Jacobs. Jacobs four horn sheep. I'm not very good with mammals, yeah. guys. I kind of just I got handed a sheep here. I love it. <laughs> um. So, um. So this is a four horn sheep. Now, um. So we can just see how pretty it is, and just you know, yes. wait for Savannah to come. Yeah, back. we're gonna wait for Savannah to come back. <laughs> There you go. I've never yep. leashed a four horn sheep I before. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Savannah, save me because. <laughs> yeah. So what? So what do we have here? So this is... Yeah, this is Betty. Betty. And oh. So okay. she is a four horn sheep, a Jacobson's four horn sheep, and this is actually a British domestic breed. They're really good at keeping other animals calm, and so a lot of times people will keep them to either guard other animals or use as companion animals for maybe more high anxious, high stress animals. Someone just asked, why do they have four horns? So that was part of what was bred into them. So they're bred for to have, you know, the really elaborate horns. They can actually have anywhere from two to six horns, which is really interesting. Most commonly being four, given the name four horn sheep. <laughs> um, they also are known for having really beautiful patterns. So a lot of them have these broken patterns. So you can see that she's multiple colors. Um, so she has both the white and the black. You also find some with more of like kind of a caramely brown color as well. And not too often will you find like solid colored ones since most people really want vibrant pattern on them. Beautiful. Awesome. And um, so with these, so is it good walking around? Like the, does Betty walk around very nicely? She does. Yeah, <laughs> she's pretty good. Um, sometimes when she's separated from, you know, her other uh, friends, the other sheep she's with, she'll, she might kind of try to go back the way they are and get a little bit rebellious. But otherwise, yeah. as long as you uh, <laughs> keep walking with her, keep working with her, she's really good. Um, she hasn't been halter trained for too long, so she's still getting used to it, but as you can see, she's adjusted quite nicely and is doing very well. What, what are the horns made out of? So these are made out of kind of like the same material your fingernails are made out of, um, and so they are quite strong. Uh, they can't break, and so you never want to, you know, grab a sheep by its horns or anything, per se, uh, because they can break off, but they're good for protection as well. And so if they feel threatened, they will dip their head and they'll charge. Beautiful. Do you want to say hi to everyone, Betty? Want to say hi to Betty? 
No, now you're quiet. <laughs> That's okay. Camera shy. <laughs> awesome. Well, everybody, lots of hearts for Betty yeah. here. Everybody. There we go. Betty is beautiful. Right? Yeah. There oh, we there go. we yes. go. Good job, beautiful. Betty. Good job, girly. Awesome. All right. Well, thank yeah. you so much for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, so we're going to just turn the camera just a little bit right here. and. Um, oh, you Betty, you're getting little. tons of hearts. Oh, oh good, good, job, good, good. What a good sheep. Awesome. All right, so we're turning the camera here. I know oh, about this one. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody, uh, while they grab the next animal, um, this here is a radiated tortoise. Now, radiated tortoises, they're from Madagascar. Um, they're a very threatened species of tortoise in Madagascar. In fact, recently there was over uh, about 4,000 of them that were about to go onto the black market and they were seized. Um, and a, huge, a bunch of people came together to actually help in rehabilitating these tortoises. And they were stacked on top of each other. Many of them didn't even make it. Um, so they're very... Uh, they are a very um, threatened, uh, threatened and endangered uh, tortoise. Sorry about that. Um, now, their shell pattern is amazing. You can see all of it. Now, if you guys have seen Gucci and Louie, Gucci and Louie are baby radiated tortoises. Those are the ones that we actually have. Um, so we have baby versions. Ours are only about like this big compared to this large here. Now, what's interesting about these guys is they do actually have some very large legs and feet here. They're very thick. Um, some people have even called these tortoises elephant foot tortoises because of the large feet and uh, legs that they have. Uh, this one's being nice and shy right now. Now, just like that sheep's horn, um, this shell is also made out of keratin as well. It's made out of the same stuff your fingernails are made out of. It's nice and hard as well, um, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, does anybody have any questions about tortoises or the sheep? We have Savannah right behind us here, so if we need any questions, Savannah's got us for the sheep. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, uh, slightly delayed, so we're waiting. Oh, slightly delayed. That's okay. Awesome animal. So while we're waiting, if anyone has questions, yeah. you guys on RMCC's Instagram mm -hmm. can follow us at Radical Reptile Fun. And... Radical Reptile Fun, go follow everyone on RMCCAZ <laughs> on Instagram. And for those of you, um, we didn't introduce her, but she's going to be talking in the background. She's filming. Uh, this is Tegan. Tegan is Radical Reptile Fun's awesome woman of the entire program. <laughs> my uh, No, she's my girlfriend. I love Tegan. She's amazing. She's okay, just a... I'm all Anywho. about that love life. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So speaking of hard animals, let's look at another hard creature over here. All right. Right here, I've got Wilson, and he is a three-banded armadillo. Oh, so, wow. One thing that's cute. really neat about these guys is they're actually the only species of armadillo that can completely roll up into a ball. And so with that, their little head and their tail just fit right next to each other, and they can completely close up. He's pretty outgoing, and so I don't think he'll <laughs> completely close up for us because he's pretty happy to be out and about. Um, but as you can see, you know, he kind of rolls up into a ball. His name is Wilson, after the Wilson basketball, since he does remind <laughs> us of a little ball. Um, he's a social little guy. One thing I find very interesting is how these ears fold up in order to also protect the ears from predators that might hurt these guys. And they are native to South America. Beautiful. And the cutest thing about these guys is when they walk on the ground. Yeah. We want to put them on the ground? Yeah, we can quick? definitely put yeah. them on the ground. Let yeah. them walk around a little bit. Do you guys hear his little feet? <laughs> yeah, they have so long nice. nails. They're great diggers. So they walk right on those nails. What you doing, Wilson? <laughs> you gotta follow him. <laughs> I know, he's going on an adventure. No, we can't go that way. Hey, buddy. What you doing, dude? Now, I know we have a lot of fans out there. We have a lizard uh, named Nigel. He's a Euromastix. Well, when uh, Euromastix get scared, they squeeze themselves into really tight spaces, mm -hmm. and they keep their tails out in front of them. So what does the armadillo do to keep itself safe? They do something similar to that. And so um, we're going to bring him back over here. <laughs> He's getting a little rambunctious. So actually what these guys do is they'll dig down into a hole, and they'll kind of sandwich themselves, almost in like a U shape. 
and they'll hold on with their claws and so pretty much there's no space that a predator could get past them and these shells are pretty hard and so if they try to get through the shell it's going to take a lot of work this is a type of modified skin and as you can see it's it's pretty dense and hard and so it's going to take some work for for an animal to hurt them their soft part is their belly right there and so in the wild they always like to curl up or walk on the ground this guy's a little more used to being out in the open and so he's pretty good with having his belly shown nice we had someone ask how long do they live and why are they called three banded so these guys are called three banded armadillos because if you actually look on his back he has three little bands that separate these two segments right here um and so there's also another type called like the six banded armadillo and then there's the nine banded armadillo <laughs> as well which is quite larger um, and we will be getting to meet a six-banded armadillo a little bit later. And then do we know how long they live for? Um, these guys are, I believe they're about like 10 to 15 years. Nice. Perfect. It's interesting how it goes from three to six to nine. Nine, yeah. yeah. Like, wow. Nature, man. <laughs> Nature. And then a question for you, Michael. Oh, okay. uh, someone asks, how long do turtles and tortoises live? It really depends on the type of species of turtle or tortoise. Um, there are some turtles and tortoises that, you know, live about 60, 70 years, but there are some tortoises that can easily per surpass over 100 years old. Um, it just really depends on the type of turtle, turtle, tortoise, and it also depends on what they're living in and how well they're, um, how well you're keeping them as well. Someone just asked us, where do armadillos live? That particular species is from South America. Yes, so that particular species is from South America. We actually learned something really interesting about armadillos. A lot of people get, um, uh, nervous about leprosy with armadillos, and the South American species actually don't actually have that at all. Um, James was telling us that earlier, which is an amazing fact. So it, the South American species don't have that at all, and it's very unknown if you can really even get leprosy from any type of armadillo either. So no. All right. Well, speaking of armadillos, here we go. All right. So I mentioned <laughs> the six-banded armadillo. So here we have a male six-banded armadillo. He is full grown, and this is Armadeus. And so we can let him try to walk around a little bit. So you guys can see the six bands on him. Yeah. And so actually with six banded armadillos, <laughs> not all do have six bands. There are some that have five or some that have seven, but most commonly they do have six bands. Just like this sheep. <laughs> yeah, yes. exactly. Um, and this is another South American species. These guys cannot roll up into a full ball, but they can kind of, you know, sandwich themselves and make a U shape and, and roll up most of the way, but not completely. They also do have those bendable ears. Oh, he's adorable. Here we go, Armadeus. Armadeus, you're beautiful. Another interesting thing is they do have three little holes right there on their backside. You do not want to touch those spots as those are a scent gland, oh. and you will not smell good for about a month, for a, probably a week or so after you touch them. <laughs> well, that's, that's awesome. a good point to know. <laughs> These guys. I really like the hairs coming off of the, yeah. the top there. That's Someone just asked, are armadillos nocturnal? They are, yes. And so they're... Let's get a nice shot of its face. They're awake at night. Hi, dude. <laughs> no, oh, that's I see my him foot. sniffing around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and so as you can see, he was digging a little bit from his smell. They do have those really nice sharp nails, and he's already starting to dig up the lawn a bit. Oh, wow, Look at that, that was fast. And so it is pretty amazing. Look at those. We'll try to hold him up a little bit. He's not too happy about this, but that's. that's but if you can see those nails right there. Maybe if I will lift him up. There we go. So if you look at those nails right there, he's got some Hi. grass in between them. He's and beautiful. You can, see that. you can see how soft their belly is. And so that really is a vulnerable area for them. So if you have to have your lawn mowed, an yeah. armadillo will just get rid of your lawn. Yeah, completely. <laughs> no more grass for you. Alright. That is awesome. I love the tail too. That seems that's yeah. adorable. He is beautiful. We'll grab him. Now, quick question, are these guys at all related to penguins at all? Penguins? They, <laughs> yeah, they, okay. they are in the same family. I love penguins. I was trying penguins. to see them when I was down in the Philippines because they have them there. I didn't realize that. Oh, yeah. And uh, they, they actually have a penguin area and I never got to go see it and I was so sad. Did we want to move away so he... Yes. Stop destroying the yard. Yeah, let's stop destroying the yard. There we go. Okay. All right. All right. It's good fun for him. Yeah. Right. He's enjoying it. Let's... Any other questions about the armadillo before we move on? Yeah. Huh? Oh, someone asked, is that the biggest an armadillo can get? Um, that's 
Fulcrum for a six banded, but there is the nine banded armadillo that's found throughout Texas. Those get even larger than the six banded. Nice. And there's also a giant armadillo. Those guys get even larger than the nine banded. Those are the largest species. Perfect. So what is down here? So right here we have a baby scarlet ibis. You can see. Sacred ibis. Sacred. Oh, sorry. Sacred, Sacred ibis. My bad. And so with these guys, um. You can see that he's just starting to get his feathers in, and he is always hungry as most baby birds are. So he's calling out, looking for some food. Unfortunately, I don't have any for him right now. Um, and then he also has this little feather duster right here, because he looks at it as a little friend for him, since it does have the feathers as well. Oh, he's so cute. We don't have food for him, but you all can give him some hearts. So start hitting <laughs> yeah. a bunch of hearts for the <laughs> for the baby <laughs> ibis. Yeah. One thing that's fun is look at how big these little feet are. Oh, wow. He has quite large feet compared to his body. Oh, he's getting hearts. There you go, little oh, guy. Good job. So, um, how old is it right now? Three days. He's three, three days, days old. Three. Oh, three weeks. Three Sorry, weeks. my bad. Sorry. Three weeks old. Awesome. And uh, what do these guys like to typically eat? Um, oh, he's getting eat, tons of hearts crickets. on Instagram. He loves crickets, and so we'll soak them in some water and feed them right to him, and he eats them up. Nice. Oh, and uh, do you guys see there's uh, something behind you? Yeah. <laughs> Someone oh, asked, what is that? This is a Patagonian cabby, and this is actually Patrick right here. He lives out here, and he's our uh, lawn mower. He does a wonderful <laughs> job with it. And he's just checking out the baby also. Yeah, he's seeing what's going on. I'm curious for everybody at home, for those of you that have dogs, is this driving them nuts or not? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, watch out for your finger. Oh, hello. Hey, little one. I don't have food for you. I'm sorry. That's okay. Aww. Hey, Aww. <laughs> He's going to imprint on you, Mike. All right, watch out. <laughs> You're about to have a baby bird. Oh, he's coming for you. I have a feather duster. Yeah, yes, a little feather duster. Yes. There you go. Aww. He likes his feather duster. Kathy says, surprisingly not. The bird noise is not upsetting the dogs. Oh, all right. I know it's probably upset my dog. Yeah. Awesome. All right, I'll go ahead and bring it. There we go. Great. Right. And then do we want to move on over here? Yeah. Yes. All right. Let's look at this beautiful being here. Everyone, this here is a Galapagos tortoise. Yes, yeah, so you're seeing a Galapagos tortoise. They're not on the island, they're actually here. Um, so this was actually captive bred by a huge Galapagos tortoise breeder who actually lives here in the valley. His name is Jerry Fife. Um, he's an amazing Galapagos tortoise breeder, amazing tortoise breeder. And so, uh, and that's where this uh, handsome man came from. His name is Tony. All right, so this is Tony. So give lots of hearts to Tony. Galapagos tortoises are known to be the largest species of tortoise in the world. Um, they eat tons and tons of food. Uh, they are only found on the Galapagos Islands. So you can't find them anywhere else unless they're in a captive collection. Um, Oh, Michael, we do have someone that just asked a question yes. on RMCC's Instagram. Yes. They said, where do these animals come from? Are they from zoos? Were they confiscated from anyone illegally? Um, so uh, this center actually has a zoological permit. Um, so they're able to obtain these animals through that zoological permit. So they'll come from uh, other, other places as well. And then they're bred for zoos. So zoos actually get these animals um, from this conservation center uh but you know I, I don't believe any of them are rescues or anything along those lines um but uh yeah so none of them are like confiscated animals are brought in um i know james has worked with lots and lots of reptiles um and other animals as well that may have been i i i'm not entirely sure i can ask him when he's coming back over here um james have any of these animals ever been uh, come from a confiscated area or like rescued? Uh, yes, yes and yes. <laughs> yes and yes. All right, so we uh, have the answer. We, I've taken in some confiscated animals, mm -hmm. and I, I have. We do a lot with rescues as well. Yeah, so they so. do a lot with rescues, and then they you get yes, they do take in confiscated animals. So, um, so again, largest species of tortoise in the world, Galapagos tortoise. Um, they're amazing animals.
and his name is Tony. He's only five years old, everybody. Um, so look how big he is in just five years. Uh, there's actually some other larger Galapagos running around um, out here, um, and they're giant. You guys have seen Tegan's picture on Instagram uh, of how big they get. They're in absolutely insanely large. Um, and right now they're doing weed control around the yard. Again, tortoises love weeds. Okay. So we also have another few comments. Someone says they have a tortoise at their elementary school. Okay. And then Braylon wants you to know he also has an African sulcata. He wants to know how big will that one get. So African spur tortoises are around the third largest. Um, so they actually get very large as well. In fact, if you're looking at a tortoise that would probably get a bigger, bigger than what you're seeing there. And again, this is my hand compared to the tortoise so you're talking some very large ones james actually has a lot of big spur tortoises here on his property it's off, it's amazing they're giant um and then you guys have seen ours at home as well um and speaking of tortoises uh oh wait we got another awesome all right so we're gonna going have... away from mammals and now or we're gonna reptiles. Go back to or, and reptiles and we're now we're gonna go to a bird so i'm gonna come on over here really quick everybody you're gonna love this bird all right, Savannah, what yeah. do you have? This is Sydney, and she is a kookaburra, which is actually the largest species of kingfisher bird that's native to Australia. I didn't know they were related to kingfishers. That's awesome. They are, yeah. That's one of my favorite birds, are kingfishers. We, oh, yeah. When we went to the UK, we actually looked for, they had this area mm -hmm. um, at this place called Slimbridge, and they had an area with kingfishers, and we didn't get to see one, but that's oh, awesome. Bummer. But yeah, well, here's a big one for you. <laughs> yeah. oh, a really large one. Yes. Um, so yeah, she's an awesome bird. These guys do eat mice in, um, in the wild. They'll eat mice, small reptiles, things like that. And so one thing that's actually super interesting about these guys is they will take like the tail of the mouse or a lizard or whatever they've caught in the wild, and they will do what's called a predatory, you know, throw. And they'll throw it on the ground to kind of break it up, make sure it's dead for sure before they go ahead and eat it and they'll swallow it whole for the most part after they've broken it up pretty well. Nice. Now Michael, are you going to sing the song for us about kookaburras? <laughs> yeah, she's laughing already. You guys hear that? You hear one in the background. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Lots of hearts for that. Yeah, yeah she just sang for you. Yeah, I know, maybe if you have a good joke for her, maybe she'll laugh at it. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, I'm trying to think of it. Uh, why, why did the kookaburra cross the road? I don't know why. To get to the other tree. Ooh, uh, Ooh. Nope, it wasn't no, that great yeah, of a joke. No, it wasn't enough, that good. I'm so sorry. A better joke. Right, anyone else? <laughs> That one didn't do it. <laughs> Someone says she laughs like their mom. Oh, oh right. yeah, that's, that's I actually mean, a pretty funny yeah. joke. Yeah. <laughs> I would take that as a compliment. I think yeah. that's a cool laugh. A yes. very beautiful yeah. laugh. <laughs> All right. Oh, awesome. yes. So, um, and where are these guys from? These guys are from Australia. And so um, they're from a little bit of a warmer climate and they'll live up in the trees of Australia. Uh, and they're characterized by their noise and so what's interesting is they'll typically live in big groups and so when one gets going with their laugh or their trill they all get going and it does get quite loud so um, a lot of times in you know films and movies people will actually record a kookaburra and use that laugh and use it for um, like to make the sound of a primate or also if you have, any of you guys have seen the movie Flipper the mm. dolphin noise they use in that movie is actually a kookaburra laugh sped up and edited and so that is the wow the fun fact <laughs> yeah, fun yeah well you're beautiful huh mm, she's a beaker. sharp that beak is mm -hmm. wow yeah, that's awesome Perfect. And are these guys breeding at the center right now? Or? They are, yes. And so she's actually paired up with a male right now. And so hopefully in the future we'll have some babies from Sydney, which would be wonderful. Nice. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks, Sydney. Thank you, Sydney. Right. Lots of likes for Sydney. Yeah, lots yes, of lots likes of for hearts, her. likes, everything, yes. please. Yeah. Sydney will appreciate it. She's a bit of a prima donna. Let's see yeah. if we can get her to sing one more time. All right. She's cute. Good job. All right, there we go. We got some hearts. Good job, Sydney. All right. Ready to go back. 
So I think it's teen's time to shine. No, it's okay. No, nope, you nope, can Michael's do it. Uh, I was trying to get her to do this one, but this one <laughs> is a leopard tortoise. All right, so here's a leopard tortoise. Now this is a, a, a nice size leopard tortoise. Um, James, do leopard tortoises get bigger than this? They, some do, yeah. Some do. <laughs> now, leopard tortoises, they're from Africa. Yeah, now, um, from Africa. some are from South Africa. Now, a lot of people, you know, they ask, you know, what's a what's a cool tortoise to own as a pet? And I actually really like leopard tortoises. They have these amazing patterns on them. They don't get as giant as the sulcatas do. Um, and you can actually see these at James's shop. Um, he actually does sell leopard tortoises out of his store. So you can actually... Uh, go out and check them out. He also has other species of tortoises that you can buy at his shop as well. Just make sure that before you ever get a pet, always do your research. That's what we always say. Make sure you're doing your research so that way you know what these animals require um, before you can have them as a pet. Um, my mom used to always make me do research projects on all these animals before I ever was able to bring one home. So yeah, so this is a lovely little leopard tortoise here. There he goes. Put your foot next to him so they yeah, can see how big he is. There we go. My foot's not very big. It's a size 10. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You can admit okay. it. All right. All right. So and let's... then do we want to talk about where the shop is again really yeah, quickly so for everyone? Again, if you want to see the shop, please go to this. Um, it's the southwest corner of Brown and Higley. Um, you'll see the sign. It says pets. Um, it's wild side pets. Uh, you can, uh, again, once everything starts to kind of slow itself down, you can definitely go out there and see, um, Fiona on Saturdays. Um, you can meet Savannah. Savannah works there. You can meet James. Um, you can meet everybody that works there. You can also see the, um, awesome animals that are there, uh, for you to get a pet. And so feel free to go out there, check them out. Remember, one of the biggest things that we say is shop local. Um, we want you guys to shop local. We don't want you to shop at those big box chains. Shop local. It's way better to shop local than it is on any of those big box chains. And they also have Facebook and Instagram too. They do. And one animal that they definitely have at their store that you can always go see are these guys here. <laughs> yes. And so all these, uh, these are what's called a lesser Madagascar Tinnerac. And so this is actually not a true hedgehog, which we do have hedgehogs at the store, mm -hmm. Wild Side Pets, so you can definitely check those guys out once things calm down a bit. Um, these guys do have a lot of resemblance to them, however. You can see all these modified hairs, which are the quills, um, which are a protective barrier for them. And these guys are insectivores also, just like the hedgehog. And they do have a pretty, you know, prehensile hands, and so they're pretty good at gripping onto things and climbing, <laughs> believe it or not. They're now, they're cute. not like a porcupine where like a quill can get stuck in you or anything like that, right? Or No, um, so they're not able to like shoot their quills, anything like that. Occasionally they will shed quills as they are modified hairs. Um, and so sometimes, you know, over time one or two might shed out and maybe it'll get on your hand. But it's not like they're purposely going to try to stick you with their quills. Um, their main defense is to roll up into a little ball, tuck their head and their feet under, and protect themselves that way since most predators wouldn't really want to grab them from the pokey side. <laughs> Now, this conservation center has another animal that's like this, and we kind of just mentioned it. So what's the other animal that's kind of like this, not a hedgehog, but bigger, uh, that they have here at the conservation center? The porcupines, yes. Um, so there are African crested porcupines here, um, and so they are another breeding animal, so we do get babies from them. And a lot of times they go to zoos or um, conservation centers, education program, and they are actually the African crested porcupines, the largest species. and they can and they can't shoot their quills, but they can, you know, back up into you and release their quills and they can get stuck into you. And then someone wanted to know how long do their quills get for these little guys? For these little guys, this is full grown for their quills. They don't get any longer. Oh. Beautiful. Absolutely love the ears. Yeah, their ears are fun. <laughs> Very cute. And are these guys nocturnal, dino? They're very nocturnal. Very nocturnal. So, yeah, they're always up at night, sleeping during the day. Perfect. The sun's going down and all these animals are starting to wake up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Another close-up. Hi. And so with hedgehogs, so you can get a hedgehog as a pet. 
Is that correct? Yes, you can. So it is legal in Arizona um, to own a hedgehog. I know it's not legal in every state, so if you are not in Arizona, definitely check and make sure it's legal for you first before you go out and buy one. But they do make great animals. Um, with them, they are nocturnal, like we had mentioned, and so just know that they're going to be sleeping during the day and up and about at night. Um, and they are solitary, so usually you'll just want to have one per enclosure for hedgehogs. Perfect. All right. And these guys were originally being displayed at the shop. And yes. Uh, will they go back to being displayed at the shop? or They will be. Yeah, once everything settles down with the virus, um, we're going to bring them back to the shop. And so you're more than welcome to stop by and see these guys. Usually we have about two of them on display at a time. And again, and the, south, the store is on the southwest corner of Brown and Higley. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Oh, look at that little Here face. <laughs> Show your face. There we Here go. You go. So cute. Very cute. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. you're welcome. All right. All right. Are we doing any other yeah, animals? Yeah. The funniest hairdo is over here. Um, so oh, it's not gonna... I won't get too close, but what 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 is this, Savannah? Do you know what the? <laughs> it's a duck with an afro. It's a duck with an afro. There we go. Yeah, which is actually, I mean, the formal name is the crested duck. Um, but I like to call it a duck with an apple because that's what it reminds me of. Um, and so he's a neat little guy. Uh -huh. All right, where we else awesome. are we going? Awesome. Well, uh, so it looks like we've seen a majority of the animals here. Uh, there's lots of other animals. Um, I, I was going to try to see if we could see one out, but I'm not seeing one out right now. That's okay. But another few animals that they actually have here, but look them on Instagram, and we're going to show pictures. Pictures. You guys actually save um, this other YouTube channel. Uh, we're actually going to have a quick collage of some of the other animals that you can see here. One of the animals that you can see here are um, warthogs. So they actually do have warthogs here. Um, and even uh, they also have uh, river hogs, which is an amazing species. They're bright red. Um, they are fascinating. So you can actually mud see them Celine. here. What was that? Mud and Celine? Yeah. So you can say mud and Celine are the Babies. Names. Uh, and they do breed them here, which is which is great. Uh, so check out the Instagram. Um, follow us on Instagram. Follow Red Mountain Conservation Center on Instagram as well. Um, and Twitter. And Twitter. And Twitter as well. The handle is R M C C A Z for both. <laughs> R M C C A Z for both. R M C C A Z for both. So make sure to follow um, them on Instagram. Follow on um, follow them on Twitter. Follow Radical Reptile Fun as well. I love posting all pictures that James has as well. Tegan comes out and takes a lot of beautiful pictures and videos as well. So make sure to follow us there. Um, everybody, again, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm sorry you're all strapped down at home. Um, I wish we were coming out to your guys' birthdays in schools, but this is the best that we can get. And we have had such generosity from all everybody that's local uh, to share animals with you guys. And a uh, big th thank you to Savannah. So Savannah, come on back. We mm -hmm. need a round of applause just <laughs> yeah. for Savannah. Uh, so Savannah, thank you so much for having yeah. us out um, and doing everything. Uh, very knowledgeable. Um, and Savannah, we're going to see you more in the future now. Yeah, so absolutely. Sure. So this for is going to be great. And do you want to yeah. tell everyone what you do again, just so in case they missed it? Yeah, sure. So um, I own a business called Animal Fantastic LLC. Check us out online at animalfantastic.com. Uh, we also do have a Facebook and an Instagram as well, so you can check us out there. Um, what we do is we go to birthday parties, school, special events, scouting events, youth groups, etc. We bring animals, we have birds and reptiles as well. Um, so check us out, and like I had mentioned earlier, we also do film and media as well. So if you need an animal for your project, reach out to us, we'll help you guys out and see if we're a good fit. Perfect, Absolutely. thank you. So again, thank you guys all for tuning in, um, and uh, t stay tuned for more videos this week. Uh, I put uh, you got lots of hearts and oh, thumbs ups too. Oh, thank you! Yeah, <laughs> wonderful, awesome. and thank you for having me. As yes, well. absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so everybody, I got some other videos that are going to be coming up. Um, we have our frog video. We put all of our frogs together. Uh, so Tegan's going to be putting that. I also put uh, George and Floyd's enclosure together um, with the donations that you guys gave us on our first video. So you guys will get to see the progress of that. Um, um, and then um, at the end of this week on Friday, uh, we're actually going to be uh, going to the pet shop to actually uh, see some of their animals as well. 
So everybody, again, thank you to James, uh, Kirsten, Hunter, Savannah, everybody for uh, allowing us to see the animals today. It's been a great day, um, and I'm always excited to meet animals this close. It's, it's amazing. So, And again, you guys can meet these animals close. Again, their store is southwest corner of Brown and Higley. Once everything kind of calms down, you can see a lot of these animals at their store, especially Fiona on Saturday. So... Thank you guys so much. Your mom's much. so high. What was that? Your mom's so high. Hi, mom. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the care packages. Yeah. All right. Um, so everybody, thank you guys. Hopefully I get a lot of hearts too. I don't know. Yeah, you're getting that. hearts. Oh, My okay, dad okay, gave okay, you okay. a thumbs up. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Uh, have a great day and uh, stay safe out there.